Now, yeah. uh, switching over, uh, speaking of the lockdown, you know, given that you are in Seattle, you know, I'm sure that you're out and about, and I even saw that you have photos of you responsibly wearing your mask. Um, I also know that <laughs> Seattle is, you know, it's still part of the United States, which means you're still subject to being racially profiled for being Asian. Um, you know, given everything that's going on right now, like, have you gotten any shit over there in Seattle? And, you know, what's your sort of take on this current rise in anti-Asian, specifically anti-Chinese racism? Uh, well, I have to say thank, thank Jesus that not happening. I haven't run into anything up here. My, mm-hmm. my girlfriend and I, it is, I, I will be honest, it is kind of a fear that run particularly in my, like in my head is like, like one day it's just going to happen. We're going to, some crazy person's going to just start yelling at us. Mm-hmm. But God, that being here in Seattle, it's, you know, very diverse, very pro- rel- pretty, pretty progressive. So no, a lot of people here, they're not, they're not going to be that, they're not going to do anything like, or they haven't done anything like that. Mm-hmm. Now I have heard some, so I have heard some like news, uh, from like our lo- the local news, they mm-hmm. have found like s- someone reported in Chinatown that there's some vandalism, and then there were some actual like like white nationalist like propaganda po- oh, post shit. it. Yeah, and when I saw it, I was like, "Fuck!" So yeah, it's kind of it, it, it's a little. I I guess part of it too is just like I'm glad I, I haven't experienced it yet, but. I and I I don't want this to I just never want to see something like this because it's even in Arizona I grew up around that shit and it was yeah that's what that's what I was thinking like you know because um my my wife um she actually lived in Scottsdale and she was telling me about how Scottsdale like she used someone she used to go to school with a bunch of like white kids who like some of them like their parents were like neo-nazis and shit and it's like it was really open because i was thinking about arizona it's like people forget that it's pretty red state over there yeah I, I, you know it, it was one i remember it was, uh this is before i moved up to seattle but i i, I was visiting my parents uh the neighborhood that i grew up in for majority of my life mm-hmm. uh we were, we were having a barbecue i looked at i looked out like uh over i looked over the wall just to kind of look at the neighborhood mm-hmm. and across the street in another neighborhood, I, the backyard's facing us, our backyard, and I see this big Trump pen, like Trump 2020 or Trump Pence uh, flag dangling. And I'm like, fuck. Yeah, man. <sighs> it, it's it's like a, it's a weird feeling because it's like, you know that like, okay, yeah, you know, I don't really know much of that about that person, but just like seeing that shit, it makes you feel like, wow, I don't feel safe here i don't feel really welcome you know and you kind of like feel like you need to kind of close in and not be associated with that shit especially being in texas where it's like people will be driving around with like confederate flags and people are around here are you know very much all about that shit and so it's um you know especially like nowadays with everything going on with the coronavirus like i know a lot of asian people are being profiled because they look asian and even if you're wearing a mask like you can see your eyes and they're just like people want to start shit like luckily for me i'm sort of in the same boat where i haven't gotten any shit but i'm also pretty good at isolating you know so i haven't really been out out but yeah yeah. well yeah for us we for us we since we live nearby our grocery stores and some of the restaurants a lot of the restaurants actually it we kind of we find it easier it's easier for us to just go walk there and quick get our stuff and get out because rather than you know pay for delivery yeah. uh, but uh I remember one day i think i forgot what it was but when masks started to become like a priority i i, I walked out with the mask on and I, I looked around and it's like everyone's wearing a mask i'm like holy crap this is like when i was back when i was it just felt like i was in asia where when i was back in like japan and Taiwan, or in thailand there's like you know you see masks all everywhere i'm like this is bizarre yeah so, i mean shit that's better than over here like i remember that you know the past few weeks i've had to go out um and i'd wear my mask and i'd wear like gloves and shit fucking and nobody in texas is wearing a mask um and you know not surprisingly they also have a lot of cases but 
you know, continuing on this discussion of uh, racism against Asians, I think, you know, one of the one of the trippiest things about e being an Asian American um, is how quickly things have changed in the last 10 years. You know, 10 years ago, it's like yeah. K-pop, Crazy Rich Asians, Fresh Off the Boat, the explosion of like the whole Asian foodie culture, uh, you know, Asian Netflix, like most of the Asian American activists, like basically all of Asian American pop culture wasn't around 10 years ago. Like, we, like, and again, you were touching base on, on, on Wong Fu, but it's like, you remember what it was like before we didn't have that shit. And as an Asian American yeah. living in 2020, seeing how the, ch seeing all these changes that we've made in the last 10 years, like what, what is your hope for 2020? 30 like how can like how do you think things can improve from here like what changes do you want to see in america asian american culture or politics or identities like how do you feel about all that what i really hope for in 2030 and again this is like anything like what i hope well i guess let me recollect what i hope for in 2030 is we see more uh we see more Asian American and more Pacific Island uh, Americans. Uh, I hope I, yeah, I, I hope we see more people like that look like us mm -hmm. taking more of an active role in like in anything they do, whether it's like whether it is politics. Like the fact that Andrew, like Andrew Yang, mm -hmm. I, I was like when I saw when I saw him get on that debate stage, I I kind of I did kind of a teary eyed moment because I was like. I'm never gonna. I've never seen this. Yeah. It, it's. And he actually spoke like to me. He was. He was like the most like, real realistic person out there. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, like, why we need more people like him out there? And then, uh, and then uh, when Crazy Rich Asians came out, I know a lot. Like a lot of people gave even some of my friends in the Asian community they gave it shit because it's this rom com, and I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's a rom com. Yeah. But, Think of, think of the potential now in the film industry. Look what it did. It showed that we can be, like, diverse films can be, or quote-unquote ethnic films, or mm -hmm. films run, shot shot by an Asian director, shot by, with Asian cast, Asian writers, everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's profitable. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Parasite. Parasite, not even, not even an American movie, but... Mm -hmm. it, blew up. It blew up, and I'm like... And when I, after I watched, actually, after I watched both of those movies, I was just like, I literally, you know, you just have that teary, that teary eyed moment where you're just yeah. like, we made it. Yeah. <laughs> we made it. So, you know, it, it's just like, I just hope 2030, we can have more people, more, more of us, like, or more a Asian, more, more POC or more people of color in mm -hmm. general, just taking these more active roles, being able to have like a fair share at the table to say, Hey, we our voices matter too or hey our representation matters as well so that's i think that that's the best way I, that's the best hope i have i want for 2030 yeah man i remember when i um when i when i first came across andrew yang um like i i i i've run, written about this before but like my first initial impression was like man get the fuck out of here there's there's no way there's this asian dude who's running for president like this is a meme he's probably going to be like one of those like I'm not really a candidate. This is just like a PR stunt or whatever. And then, then when I started to look into it and I was like, okay, he's serious. And then I started to look into his policies like, oh, and I actually agree with his policies. It was a very bizarre feeling. And like, I don't know how, how much you got into the whole Andrew Yang scene or anything like that. Um, but like, I know like, following him and learning about his politics and then reading all the all the criticisms people had i know that a lot of people had some like really weird anti-asian shit to say about him so it was just a very weird experience seeing it and it's just like you know on one hand it's encouraging to know that like oh shit like, we can actually do this like we can actually like have an asian president um but then at the other hand it's like you know even if you are an asian president the same way that we learned with barack obama it's like you can have a non-white president and unfortunately you would still get that same treatment as if you know you weren't president at all yeah. um but uh, like to your point about media representation i think this goes back to what we're saying about 
creatives and you know having more creatives of color in um in executive positions where we can actually make decisions on how films are made or which stories are being told you know hopefully we get to a point where it's like movies like crazy rich asians are just kind of a it's, it's not really a special event it's just that's how things are like these are just the stories that we tell and and these are just the people that we're going to highlight <laughs>